Alright, so this is the RGB30 by Pow Kitty. It's a little device that really took off at the end of last year, and it's one that I've been super excited to try. So when Banggood.com sent this out to me for review, I was pretty thrilled. It's a really neat looking handheld with a pretty unique 1 to 1 aspect ratio screen, making this thing ideal for systems like Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and even things like Pico 8. Today's video is going to be a bit of a shorter one where I'm just going to do my initial impressions of this thing, with a full review coming later within the next couple of weeks. Bear with me. Who's ready for story time with Portly? I had to get this video out in time to tell you guys about Banggood's sale currently going on right now, ending on March 25th. So just a few days left by the time this video goes up. I am going to have an affiliate link in the description where you can pick this thing up on Banggood.com for $95.99 with the 128GB storage. Uh, that's just packed full of games, a whole bunch of games on that. It's only about 7 or $8 more than you can currently find this thing on Pow Kitty's official website, and I think that's only the 16GB version with no games. So because I have to get this video out in a timely manner, I would Unfortunately, haven't been able to spend the proper time that I want to spend with this thing for a real review. And I think it's only fair to you guys and only fair to this device that I really give it the time that it needs and put out a later video with a full review. This video is going to be pretty quick and sloppy. I know how you skits like I'm sloppy. <laughs> Lady, you're scaring us. <laughs> So here it is, on the left side you've got your D-pad, select button, and left thumbstick as well as a speaker grill. And on the right side you've got your face buttons, another thumbstick, your start button, your LED power indicator, and another speaker grill. Along the top you've got your shoulder buttons, L1 and L2, R1 and R2. You've also got your power button, a reset button, your volume buttons, and a mini HDMI port so you can dock this thing to your TV. Along the bottom you've got one USB-C port for charging, the OTG USB-C port. You've got one micro SD slot on the left for your operating operating system. Out of the box this has a 16 gigabyte card for the OS. And on the right is the SD card for your games. This one came with the 128 gigabyte SD card. And in the middle there you've got your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Nothing on the sides or the back other than some screw holes in the back that you can use to open this thing up if you need to. And I did need to open this thing during my time with it so we'll get into that. When I first started this thing up I was welcomed by some surprising background music. Yeah, for some reason, Pow Kitty decided that for some nice ambient noise out of the box, maybe you'll want to listen to the Mortal Kombat theme song while you're browsing your game collection. Thankfully, you can disable that, which I did pretty quickly. Immediately, I am blown away not only by the presentation of this front end, but also the number of systems and games that this thing has, and even more so, this gorgeous screen. It may not really come through for you guys over video, but the image quality on this home menu alone looks super clear and crisp, more so than any other handheld I've reviewed so far. And that's because of the resolution on this screen. It's got a 4 inch 720 by 720 screen and with that size and resolution it really makes the images on this thing pop, especially for 3D games. For legal purposes I think going forward with these videos I'm going to refrain from naming specific games that come with it including in the comments so if you have questions about that I'm sorry I might have to just really not divulge that information. This is just to be on the safe side with a certain company cracking down on things just in case they start coming for these videos. I'm gonna be a little extra careful. But what I will say is that this version with the 128 gigabytes of storage came absolutely packed and I have not added any of my own ROMs to this thing. Everything you see in this video is what you get. If you watch my review of the Anbernic RG35XXH, you may remember that I kind of struggled with N64 emulation, at least at first until I changed some settings and some cores and whatnot. Well, out of the box, the RGB30 runs N64 great, for the most part. Games like Bomberman 64 do have some frame rate drops here and there for some reason, but it's totally playable. N64 does have this weird filter over the screen by default though where it's going for like a CRT effect and at least on this small screen it makes things just a little bit hard for me to see. I'm pretty sure this can be disabled somewhere but for now I'm just going to use it as is. The 1 to 1 aspect ratio of the screen again makes this ideal for Game Boy and Game Boy Color because it's the closest to the aspect ratio that those screens had. And the great thing about having such a large tall screen is if you're playing something that's not one by one like a Game Boy Advance 
Defense or PlayStation, it is going to have black bars on the bottom and top of the screen, but it's still going to be a pretty big full-sized image that you're going to see pretty clearly. I dare say it almost looks about the same size as the screen normally looks on something like the Miu Mini Plus and the RG35XX. The tall screen is also going to make this pretty great for DS emulation. Yes, this thing can play Nintendo DS and I'm pretty happy with the selection here. DS emulation might be a bit hit and miss based on my very short amount of testing so far, with Pokemon running pretty well, but games like Dragon Quest V totally struggling just at the title screen. <laughs> Now I'm sad to say that one of the reasons I'm holding off on doing a full review of this thing is because unfortunately I ran into a number of issues using it. The first major issue I ran into was just going through and testing games. I decided to launch Afterburner. It was an arcade version. I can't even remember specifically which system it was for. I got to play around with it for a little bit and then I tried to leave the game and then the system crashed and then it would not start up again. And no matter what I did, it just would not turn back on. Thankfully, Google came to the rescue and I found a bit of a solution. I had to open this thing up, which is not as easy as it looks, unfortunately. It does have four screws on the back, but you also need some kind of pry tool to get the plastic open. And then I had to unplug the battery and plug it back in after a few seconds. That worked, and this thing has worked pretty well since then. And then another issue I ran into was actually just yesterday while trying to film footage for this video. This thing does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and I am connected to the Wi-Fi, and I saw there was an option to update the system, so I thought, hey, why not? Let's get this thing updated. Once the update was done, all of my games were gone. Every single game on this thing was gone. Luckily, it wasn't actually gone. It had to do with an issue that the update caused where there was a ROMs folder now present in the second SD card where the games are stored, but those folders in the ROMs folder were all empty. Instead, all the games were still in the root folder, and you have to put them into the the folders in the ROMs folder. I don't understand why they made that change. It's something that they changed and I had to go in and drag all these games into the correct folders and now everything works. So if you run into that issue and this video helped you figure out what you need to do to fix it, make sure you like and leave a comment and let me know. And then after all that, as if it wasn't bad enough, suddenly I wasn't getting any audio for some reason. I, I don't understand why, but there was just no audio in any game. And then suddenly there was, and there has been since. I don't understand it. Yeah, let's just say these issues have not given me the best impression of the RGB 30. But I know there's a reason that this thing was so popular and this thing did really well in reviews when it launched just a few months ago. So I'm going to give it its due process and give it a fair shot and let you guys know in the final review whether or not it's actually worth it. But if you're curious about it for now, well, I will again have that affiliate link in the description. You can feel free to pick one up if you like and see what you think about it. If you have any experience with this thing or any other Pow Kitty devices and you have any tips or tricks that you want to let me know about for the final review, let me know. Make sure you're subscribed for when that hits. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks again to Banquet.com for sending this out for review. And yeah, I'm out of here. Make sure you watch the video. Uh, it, I'll just have other similar videos linked right here for you guys to check out. In the meantime, bye.